To start off, first create a torus, as it actually resembles a donut. Then go to the Modify tab and change a few parameters such as the radiuses to make it proportionally accurate to a real donut. Here are the values that I have used, you can use your own if you want. Although this looks like a good sized donut, there are some changes that we need to make, for example, as of now the donut is perfectly circular. To fix that, with the donut selected, go to the Modify panel and in the Modifier list, add a Noise Modifier. The noise modifier is used to add random irregularities in a mesh, we can use it to slightly alter the shape of our donut. Here are the values that I have used for scale and strength. As you can see now, it looks more like an actual donut. It is always helpful to rename an object and change its color to ease an understanding. Now, to create the icing on top of the donut, go to the Modify panel. And add an Edit Poly modifier. And then, choose the Polygon Selection type. Then, Select the polygons on top of the donut like so. You can deselect a polygon by holding the Alt button and clicking on it. Then, select the Transform tool. And while holding down Shift, drag the polygons upward. This will create a copy of the selected polygons. You can name the new object, change its color, and position it on top of the donut. To make the icing look more natural, go back to Edit Poly Modifier and choose the Vertex Selection type. You will also need to set the constraint to edge, this will make sure that the vertex move along the edge only. Once all of this is done, move the vertex upward like so. Do it to all of the vertices at the bottom of the icing. At this point, you can add a TurboSmooth modifier with iterations of 2 to both the donut and the icing in order to smooth out the mesh. Now, we need to add a bit of thickness to the icing. So, with the icing selected, add a shell modifier on top of the Edit Poly modifier. A shell modifier adds thickness to any mesh, however, here clearly some setting are required to be changed. Here are the values that I am using for now. With thickness of the icing done, it is time to create the dripping effect, that is, creating the drops of the icing that are rolling down the sides of the donut. To do that, go back to the Edit Poly modifier and choose the Edge Selection type. Now, select one of the edge at the bottom Make sure you have the constraints set to None. Then, hold down Shift and drag the edge downward to create a new polygon. Repeat the process for different edges around the donut.
Click on the toggle end result button to see the mesh with all the modifiers applied to it. To make the drops look more accurate, choose the vertex selection type and move the vertices at the bottom closer to each other. Repeat the process for each of the droplet. To further enhance the shape of the droplet, select both the edges across a single drop. And choose the connect option. This will create a new edge across them. Repeat the process for each of the droplet. Now, you can further move these newly created edges and vertices to create a better shape, like I am doing so. You can spend a lot of time in this step if you want, you can add new edges as well as transform the old ones in order to create a believable mesh. Also, don't forget to do all of this for the inside. It is starting to look good. I have changed the thickness of the icing again, you can do so as well, and set it to what looks best for you. Here are my values, if you want to use them. At this point, I have spent some time on the icing, to get the shape right. I recommend you do the same. Now, the last step is to create the sprinkles. For that, choose extended primitives from the command panel. And then, create a chamfer cylinder. Change the radius, height, and segments to make it look like a sprinkle. Here are my values. Now, the first step is to add an edit poly modifier to this sprinkle. Then, choose the element selection type. Select the entire sprinkle. And rotate it to negative or positive 90 degree on the x-axis. We have done this because this is how the sprinkles will be placed on top of the icing. We would also need to move the pivot point to the center again by going into the hierarchy panel, then clicking on effect pivot only button, followed by center to object button. Also, move the pivot slightly downward, as this is the point of contact between the sprinkle and the icing. Another thing you need to fix is by going to the utilities panel, 
and then clicking on the Reset X Form button, followed by Reset selected. This will tell 3DS Max to reset all the transform for this new shape of the chamfer cylinder. Basically do this if the pivot point is acting a bit strange. Finally add a bend modifier, since no sprinkle is straight. To duplicate the sprinkle and place all of them on top of the icing, choose Compound Objects from the Command Panel. and then click on Scatter. Select the Move option, and then pick a distribution object on which we want to scatter the sprinkles. As you can see, the sprinkle will be randomly distributed on top of the icing. In the Scatter properties, you can increase the number of sprinkles and their sizes. Here are my values. Also, select Distribute Using Area to evenly distribute them over the icing. To add a bit of randomness, you can change their transform. Lastly, add an Edit Poly modifier and select the Element Selection type. Press F for the front view. Then Z to center the object. Then select and delete the excess sprinkles as I have done here. From this point on, you can add further decorations to the donut, like these random sphere-like sprinkles. Also, to add a bit of texture to the actual bread of the donut, you can add a noise modifier. We are done here, you can spend as much time as you want on this donut, and can do a lot more with textures and sculpting. If you would want me to make a tutorial on how to add materials to these sprinkles, please comment down below, and I will make a separate tutorial on it. As for now, thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe so I can make more straightforward tutorials like these.